Today we're talking all about preamps, specifically uh, in the context of an acoustic guitar or any acoustic instrument, actually. We're going to be featuring the Sonic Cake A Factory, which is a new pedal from them, and I think it's a fantastic choice, especially if you're on a budget. So first off, let's start by defining a preamp. It's used in a lot of different ways in the audio world. Um, in the context of electric guitars, the preamp is the first thing that your signal hits when you plug into a guitar amp. Okay, from there, we can manipulate it with the amp's EQ, maybe add a little bit of reverb or tremolo. If you're using an overdriven amp, oftentimes this is where a lot of the overdrive can be coming from the preamp section. In recording land, we also have uh, a preamp that's going to amplify a mic or an instrument level signal up to a line level signal. And from there, it would head on into the analog to digital conversion and eventually end up in your computer. In a live performance scenario, we also have preamps in the console, which is same as recording. It's gonna amplify your instrument or mic level signal up to a line level signal. From there, you can mix, add reverb, EQ, compression, all that stuff, finally send it to the power amp, and that's where it's gonna amplify it through the speakers. In acoustic instrument territory, it could be an acoustic guitar, a mandolin, violin, which I'm going to demo all of these in a second. Uh, a preamp actually deals with matching the impedance. So a passive piezo pickup is putting out a super high impedance signal, and in order to use other equipment to feed it into a mixer even, you're going to need some uh, impedance matching, and that's where a preamp comes in. For years, I used the Red Eye. I've actually got two of these. I've got one built into a pedal board and this guy that I keep alone by itself. But a passive piezo pickup, 100%, you're gonna need an analog external preamp, a high quality impedance matching device, okay? If your instrument takes a battery, if it's got extra electronics inside it, actually your, your instrument already has a preamp built in. You don't necessarily need that functionality. If you own an acoustic amp, you actually already have a preamp an impedance matching preamp built into that. That's part of the, the selling uh, point of an acoustic amp. It's not just a flat range amplifier. It also has that impedance matching preamp built into it. So let's talk about the Sonic Cake A Factory. I'm going to run through a couple of the specs uh, and then we're going to get a chance to check out all the different controls that we have here. Although a preamp is really nice to have, um, this guy has some added EQ. You can add a little bit of reverb and also there's a notch filter which can be really helpful in fighting feedback. So let's check out the controls here. Starting off, we just have our volume, which is actually gonna amplify the signal. We do have a preamp bypass switch here. So with the volume in the 12 o'clock position, there's no change. You can boost or lower it as you need to. And the switch here is gonna also bypass the three band EQ and the notch filter. Three band EQ, we just have controls for treble, middle, and bass. We'll check that out in just a second. The notch controls, we're able to select the frequency that maybe might be giving us feedback issues and we can actually drop the volume of it that way. And then we have a separate switch over here. This is controlling just the reverb where we have the mix and decay controls for that. As always, there's timestamps in the description. If you want to check out the Sonic Cake A Factory, there's going to be a link down there as well. Uh, and if you use the code at checkout, I'll leave that in the description. You're going to get 10% off your order. I've shared a number of Sonic Cake pedals on my channel in the past. I honestly think that they're a great company that makes affordable products that are built to last. They're worth your money, especially if you're on a budget. They're just well thought out, nicely built, and uh, yeah, I'm happy to, to share them on this channel. Another nice feature that was added is that we actually have a mute switch here. Press and hold the reverb switch. It's going to cut your signal. You can unplug, change guitars if you need to, or maybe you're just taking a set break. Input, output wise, we have a single high impedance input, as I mentioned. The high impedance rating, by the way, is up to one meg, which is huge. That's gonna be enough for any passive piezo pickup. Um, we have a quarter inch output. Use this if you're heading into an acoustic amp, if you're heading into uh, other guitar pedals. We also have an XLR out. This is a great thing to have, especially if you're just an acoustic guitarist. Rolling up with this, you can do a little bit of your own like tone shaping with the EQ, fight feedback your own, add a little bit of reverb as you like it and then send it on to front of house. Sound guys love you when you show up and all you need is an XLR cable. If you have a balanced output, it's also wise to have a ground lift switch. So that's built in here as well. It's powered with a standard nine volt DC current center tip negative connection like all other guitar pedals. One of my only criticisms is I wish it could be powered with phantom power or maybe with a battery. It just make it a little bit easier to set up, especially if this is all you have. 
Okay, I'm gonna demo the three band EQ here. It's pretty simple, there's not much to talk about. Um, so, it, and it really depends on your pickup, so I'm not gonna sit on this too long, but treble, middle, bass, uh, in the noon position where you're gonna see it in a minute, that's no effect. You can boost or cut, but in the middle, there's no change. All right, so the, the treble frequency I find is super high frequency. Just to give you an idea of what to listen for, you're gonna hear a lot of pick noise when I boost that, like air kind of, it's, it'll help you stick out in a really dense electric mix, like multiple guitars, keyboards, bass, stuff like that. Turning up that, that treble, that's gonna help you cut above, just in that, that special range that lets people know that there's a, an acoustic guitar in there. The mid control, not so useful in a really dense mix, maybe in a, a, like a smaller group setting. You can push the mids a little bit, or depending on your pickup, this might help improve the sound if you wanted to cut it back. The bass control, specifically on this pickup, um, is picking up a lot of uh, like kick drum range frequencies. This pickup is really naturally bass heavy, just by the way it's installed, by the way it works. It's the K&K Pure Mini, by the way. It's basically three capacitors, piezo elements, on the underside of the bridge. Um, and yeah, it picks up every little shift that I have if I knock the guitar with my hand a little bit, bump into the bridge. And so what I pretty much always do is just roll a little bit of the low end down. So just to give me an idea of what to listen for, let's check out the three band EQ. All right, this time around, I'm gonna demonstrate the notch filter. You might be able to hear right now, I'm actually coming through my studio monitors and I've got them turned up pretty high, which is why you can hear a little bit of a hiss. And I'm also using the camera mic. Uh, you're not hearing it directly from the recording interface. So uh, what the way the notch works here is basically, this is your way to figure out which frequency is feeding back um, Ease, the most easily, and you can you can eliminate it. So the notch control is our gain for for the frequency that you would select with the N frequency control right here. So the way you do it is uh, basically at noon. This is no change. It's just like these controls here, the other EQ. That's going to be boosting. That's no change. Counterclockwise, you'll be cutting the frequency. So I'm going to roll this all the way down, which is our lowest frequency, and then I'm going to sweep it through until I find the frequency that's feeding back. It happens to be happens to be that third fret F. I don't know if you can hear that kind of going right now. Um, so I've got the frequency all the way down, and I'm boosting the gain on the notch. Hopefully this doesn't get away from itself. Um, and now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to sweep the frequency 
until I find where that F is. Right there. Now I'm going to cut it down. And that's going to be, that's going to allow you to turn yourself up a little bit hotter on stage. Um, and this is a pretty narrow notch. In fact, I don't think I hit it perfectly because I can still kind of hear it. And I'm also talking around that frequency. That seems to be working pretty well now. So what this does is it lets you turn yourself up on stage louder without, you know, experiencing feedback. If you can find that specific frequency that's giving you some issue, this is going to be a great way to fix it yourself without having to, to speak to the sound guy and have him do it. No problem now. Now, the reverb is real simple, but I'll run through it here. As I mentioned before, we have our own bypass control specifically for the reverb, which is nice. Um, and then we've got a mix control, which is just controlling the balance between the dry, uh, as also known as the unaffected, just the regular guitar signal, and the wet sound. The wet sound would be just the reverb. So at fully counterclockwise, this is just guitar. You're not going to hear any reverb. And then fully clockwise, it's going to be about 50-50 reverb and guitar. Okay, the decay control is just controlling the length of the reverb with the shortest being counterclockwise and the maximum length. Think about what size of a hall you're in. The bigger the hall, the longer the reverb's going to last. So fully clockwise here, this is our longest reverb sound. Let's listen to it for a second. So both controls at noon. Let's take the decay all the way down to minimum and I'm going to boost the mix up so you can hear just the decay. Basically no reverb there. I'm going to raise it up a little bit. It's going to sound like we're in a very small room. Okay, midway. Now it starts to sound like we're in a small club, maybe getting towards like a concert hall kind of sized room. And finally maxed out. Personally, I tend to find that the higher you go on the decay side, the longer decay you use, the less reverb you should have mixed in, and vice versa. So let me display those two sounds here. Maybe I want a lot of reverb, but I just kind of want a shorter decay here. So that's, that's how I use reverb, basically, on an acoustic guitar. All right, I've switched guitars here briefly. This is the Eastman E20OM. This is my live acoustic. I've found that it's better to keep my, my D28 with a very minimalist passive pickup, which is great for the preamp, but I want to demonstrate how you can also use this with a guitar that already has a preamp built in. This is where the preamp bypass, I think, is going to be very useful. So if you're using a passive pickup, you're going to want to leave it on all the time. However, if your instrument takes a battery, it's already got a preamp built in. Okay, but where this can be useful actually, and by the way, the preamp control is controlling, of course, the preamp, also the three band EQ, and also the notch EQ here. The reverb is entirely separately controlled here with its own switch. So, um, one scenario that, that this might be useful is uh, maybe, you know, you're playing a couple songs in your set that are strumming and, and a couple that are finger picking. Finger picking is typically much lower volume. Your sound guy is going to love you if you can compensate for this yourself. Okay, so what I've done here is I've set up a little bit more volume once I turn this on. I've boosted the trebles. Maybe you want some of that like high-end finger-picking sparkle to help you kind of kind of cut through there. A little bit more bass, and then I've pulled the mids back. So here's just an example of where the preamp might be useful.
as mentioned, this is highly recommended for anyone that has any sort of completely passive piezo pickup in your instrument, no matter what it is. I'm gonna demonstrate it with my mandolin, which I'm using a K and K pure mini type pickup. It's just two transducers instead of three that are mounted directly under the bridge on the inside of the body of that thing. And then I'm also gonna demonstrate it on my violin. For my violin pickup, I'm using the LR bags, which is built into the bridge. So there it is, that's the Sonic Cake A Factory. Um, one more criticism that I'd like to share very quickly, and you can go back and listen to it. I wanted to put this at the end of the video, because if you didn't notice it uh, throughout the whole video, probably you're not gonna notice it when you're playing and you're using it. But if you get this thing, you plug it in, it creates a little bit of noise. This is a budget-friendly product. Something like the Red Eye is about three times that cost of, of the A Factory, although it, it is dead silent. This is super high quality, like I said, I own two of these. It has a boost built in, um, a one knob control for treble frequencies, you can boost or cut. It also has an effects loop and it can be powered by phantom power, uh, nine volt cable or a battery. So this super high end, I think this is probably about 80% of the way there. Also includes some EQ, notch filtering for feedback control, reverb, it's got a mute on it, it's got the ground the ground lift and the XLR output in addition to the quarter inch output. This is just a really smart thing to have on hand if you're an acoustic guitarist or playing whatever other instrument. So let me know your thoughts down below. Is it missing anything you would like to have seen? Uh, if you have any questions, something I skimmed over too quickly, let me know in the comments down below. And again, as I mentioned earlier, if this is something you might want to check out, you can head to the Sonic Cake website at the link in the description. Use the code in the description at checkout. You're gonna get 10% off. Thanks for watching, take care, and I'll see you in the next video.